why would you say that you know Planned Parenthood or the or pro-abortion movements in general, essentially they're targeting? You said cultures of countries with cultures of life. Yes. Why are they? Why do you think that they're doing this, targeting these groups like this? So, I mean, it makes complete sense. Their whole goal is to have death, right? They want to have the population be decreased. If we look back, really the roots of this all, it comes from Margaret Sager and the eugenics movement, right? They say that there's groups of people that are not worthy of life, unfit. And that's why we see people like Bill Gates that are pushing birth control and they're pushing reducing the population in Africa. And those are some of the few countries that actually even have a population that's even growing, right? Because they have this culture of life. They have a culture of family. The family's been disintegrated in many of these cultures already. And I know we think like, okay, Latin America is like super Catholic, but I hate to say it, there's only one pro-life university group that's official in all of Mexico, to my knowledge. And this group, we just spoke with his lead, the leader who started this group, it was shut down by the university, just like all the other pro-life groups have tried to start. They took it to the media in Monterey, where abortion is not legal, right? So imagine, abortion's not legal, they try to have this pro-life club, it gets shut by down by the school administration, they take it to the media, then they get reinstated. But they're still afraid to even talk about abortion. And so now we're actually talking to them about like, hey, how you can be a voice, right? And empowering them to be able to do that. But the thing is, 90% of the classmates at the university are atheists. So we already see that they've been targeting the younger generation and to degrade the morality, right? In Uganda and in Kenya, even the Christians, the women are having questions, what's your body count? How many people have you been sleeping with, right? So they're targeting the very foundation of morality of saying like, you should seek intimacy with someone as opposed to seeking intimacy with Christ and waiting for lifelong love. You should seek intimacy with someone just for that second. And then they know that this is going to degrade the foundations of the society. And then they want to earn people's money to have them get an abortion and pay for it to kill their baby that they made you kill. And then they're using the body parts. Well, in the U.S. we know this. They're using the body parts for research and they're earning money from it, right? So it's really a horrible, evil plan, honestly. But the good news is we can actually do something about it. So, and we don't have to be apathetic. And that's really what I want to do is call my generation to stand up and not be afraid. Because the true heroes, just like MLK, right? Everybody looks to him and is like, oh, that's so cool, everything he did, right? But what he did was not popular in his day, right? There was people who risked their lives and he actually gave his life to stand up for what was right and for true and the injustice. And we see now a society that has come and progressed so far because of his work. And I think that's what we have to remember is it's going to be hard. Yeah, there's going to be rough days, but it's okay because God is with us and we have a bigger purpose, right? If we are rescuing the innocent, just like Esther did back 3,000 years ago, then that's why we're here. What are the crises of our day? And this is the greatest human rights crisis. Like one out of three of our generation globally is missing because of abortion. 73 million a year, 99% of abortions are happening outside the U.S., and it's something that most people have never, ever heard of before.